Hello and welcome to the Friends 24 uh, interview. Welcome to Munich. It's the annual security conference and our guest today is the president of Finland, Sauli Ninisto. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for being with us. Thank you for the invitation. We're nearing one year of war in uh, Ukraine. Uh, do you believe that if Vladimir Putin is not defeated in Ukraine, he will go further and as such, Finland could be a prime target for him. If we follow what uh, Putin and other, other Russians have been speaking during the, well, decades, uh, it's always concentrated more on Ukraine. And uh, there's some kind of historic element Mother Russia has uh, in her lap, a wider area than just uh, Russia as we have learned to know Russia. But Finland doesn't uh, actually belong to that group. But nevertheless, uh, if we would um, think that uh, Putin is very successful in uh, Ukraine, well, it might be that uh, appetite is growing. But uh, what comes to Finland, we are not afraid, but we are well awake. And that's the position actually Finland has had always, because we have some uh, very dark memories from the future, from centuries. And a very long border. Yes, and a very long border. You know Vladimir Putin since your uh, first election uh, a decade yep. uh, ago. Uh, you called him in May to yes. tell him that what he did had provoked a sea change in Finland, that Finland would become a member of NATO. What did he tell you? Yes, uh, actually I had said it uh, publicly already that uh, look at the mirror, you caused this. And uh, I wanted to call him only because of, uh, well, I'm not the type who sneaks away around the corner quietly. It was, uh, well, clear to tell him that, well, we are going to NATO. And uh, he took it uh, quite calmly, actually. No threats? No, he actually said also publicly that uh, he doesn't feel that it is a threat, uh, but um, that Finland made a mistake, that was his. But uh, surely, Earlier on and later on, his people have been talking about that if you go, we have to, to uh, somehow to answer to that. That means uh, maybe more military on, on the borderline. Are you seeing like this? Like they have now around Baltic countries and all that kind of things. But now we haven't seen any sign of that because it seems that they need their troops elsewhere. Back in 2007, Vladimir yeah. Putin came here. He delivered a speech in which he criticized the expansion of NATO, saying it was a threat. Western countries felt, well, okay, maybe he has grievances, but let's move on. The following year, he went into Georgia, 2014, uh, Ukraine. You've met uh, Vladimir Putin. You spent some time uh, with him. Uh, did you and others in the West totally misread him? <clears throat> Maybe, but um, surely we condemned immediately the Crimea operation and uh, entering the Donbass in 2014. Uh, then they started the process, Minsk process. And uh, I think that uh, at least a couple of few years uh, very many believe that this will somehow end the crisis and uh, some kind of a deal could be made. But um, the more there was just discussion without any results in the Minsk process, well, believe it, belief in that surely reduced. And... Uh, uh, I, I think that uh, many of us understood that it's an open question, the Ukrainian question for Russians. 
But now it's an open war. I mean, it is. nobody really predicted a year ago that we would witness what we're seeing, including yourself. Saying, OK, we're hoping that it would get so we realized it was going nowhere is different from Russia going into Yes, Ukraine. but uh, we have to keep in mind that already in the end of uh, 21, we heard uh, specifically American I intelligence telling that they are sure that Putin is preparing an attack. And uh, I had some <clears throat> telephone confer conversation with uh, President Biden on December, January, and still there was uh, hope, at least some kind of hope, that uh, could it be avoided. And uh, I was calling to Biden, to Putin, to Biden, to Putin, but, well, nothing helped. Russians kept on saying that they are not going to attack anywhere. President Zelensky said there should be no territorial compromises yeah. uh, with Russia. This means that the idea that Crimea could be a bargaining chip that we heard in some Western country is now totally off the table. Uh, I think that uh, President Zelensky has very good reasons to keep his territory. And that is uh, his, uh, well, actually his duty and task. Emmanuel Macron, the French president, said two months ago that Rus Europe must consider giving Russia security guarantees. At the time, he was criticized by Ukrainian leaders okay. and by you as well. You said that, that it's not the time. Uh, since then, he said, well, we have to ensure that Russia is defeated. Here in Munich, he said, clearly, the time for dialogue is not now. We're in for a long war, uh, do you think uh, that the French president and to a certain extent the German chancellor have come around on, on this issue, that they realize that it's not the time to try to find a compromise with Putin? First of all, I <coughs> consider that it's most important that President Macron and uh, Chancellor Scholz both have a possibility of discussing to Kreml. Somebody has someday to do it. And uh, that is important to keep that possibility, possibility open. Uh, then what comes to what uh, President Macron said about uh, security guarantees, mm, my response was that, uh, uh, yes, uh, if Russia can give security guarantees to its neighbors with <laughs> same credibility, we can surely <laughs> answer. There's the issue also of uh, weaponry uh, sent by the West, belatedly, yeah. according to President Zelensky. Uh, we saw the debate over air defense system, over tanks. Uh, Finland is going to send some tanks, Leopard tanks, I understand, to uh, Ukraine. When, how many? Um, first of all, we have uh, given Ukraine armament aid per capita more than Germany has. And we haven't openly said what kind of uh, armament we are giving because we wouldn't like our neighbor to read what we have and what we have left and what we have given. Uh, I have said to, to this Leopard uh, project that uh, if there is a European cooperation, Finland will take part to that. But we have to keep in mind that Finland is the only Leopard holder who is not a member of NATO and has a very long borderline. So our, it would be our, limited. our aid is limited. Fighter jets, good idea. Well, that's uh, an open question. I have no opinion on that now. Let's see how it develops. You mentioned NATO. Obviously, what has also changed, as I said, is that Finland and Sweden are now uh, waiting to be accepted into NATO. Yep. Only two countries have not ratified uh, this process. Number one, Hungary, and number two, uh, Turkey. For many months, Finland and Sweden have said, we go in together, and that's it. Right now, it seems that this has changed in the last few days that since Turkey has more objections towards Sweden, Finland could go first. Is that what's happening, Mr. President? Actually, for a longer period, Turkey has been telling that 
Finland is almost okay, Sweden not. And sometimes they have even said that they could accept Finland. Right. But immediately afterward, we hear another voice from Turkey putting some conditions to us too. So <clears throat> what has now happened is that, uh, uh, that uh, Erdogan has maybe more openly said that Finland would be okay if he doesn't make the same mistakes as Sweden. We have full co-understanding co with Sweden that we want to work, that both are members as soon as possible. But not together anymore. This has well, changed. Well, 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 wait a moment. We have full co-understanding. Turkey has its own understanding. Let's see that if they start the process to ratify Finland, should we refuse that? No. That, that is taking our... <laughs> uh, we are taking back the applying. It's a difficult position. But there were earlier on discussions or initiatives from Turkey that Finland should herself indicate that we want to separate, detach right. Sweden. Is this and what you're saying? we are not going to do that, no. If we are asked whether uh, we want or do you refuse, our answer is very clear. It's in your hands what you do. We have already implicated our will by applying membership. So this should be resolved soon. You, you said recently that you were hoping that both countries would be admitted before the next NATO summit yes. scheduled in July yes. in Lithuania. In Vienna. Yeah. Is this still a realistic hope or? Yes, I, I believe. You believe? Yes. Will you try to talk to President Erdogan to convince him to say no, yes to I, I haven't been talking with him because uh, uh, I actually want to stay together with Sweden. We both have applied, and usually when you have an application, you don't have to run after that asking questions or, or, uh, or asking for acceptance. We are waiting what they do. President Ninisto of Finland, thank you very much for appearing on the France 24 interview. Merci and, beaucoup. And thank you all for watching it.